Cliff Hollywood, Jaja Gabor, Barry Boswick, comedian Paul Mooney, with Port Lindsay and his orchestra. And now, here comes Bert. I think you're going to see a yo-yo show here. Did you hear who's on? Shaja, sir. Shaja, yeah. Shaja, is that exciting? You all remember the series My Three Sons? Well, Shaja's here to talk about her new series, My Eight Husbands. <laughs> She'll kill me. But what can I say? She did it again. We read about it again. It is over again. <laughs> Before we finished the article in the paper, it was over. Again. As fleeting as marriage can be, her beauty and charm is certainly never ending. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Miss Jaja Gabor. <laughs> You look... Listen to them all out there buzzing about your gown. It's pretty, pretty expensive. Or were you buzzing about her age? No, so, no. Shut up. <laughs> Gorgeous. Beautiful. And look at the uh, fake. Of course, a mother shop. What else? No, uh, how do you know what I was looking at? I hope you don't think I'm fake. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Want to talk about it, Jaja? You did about it again? I, you talked me into it. I did not talk you into it. We went to a little restaurant in Palm Beach. He darling, this is this Duke de Alba, wonderful, blue-eyed, tall. I knew him since I'm 10 years old from Switzerland, where we both went to school, except he got the wrong. Lausanne, Switzerland, Rosé. Huh? So he says, my dear, you're in love with an actor who's no good for you. Naturally, is no good, but I love an actor. I like a truck driver. I don't want a duke. Who the hell needs a duke? They well, can't make love. They would have made you a duchess. But I don't need to be a duchess. I want a man who, make, who delivers in the night. <laughs> Well, I'll marry a truck driver. He'll deliver in the night. I like that. I like You that. want somebody who'll deliver all night, right? Don't be so vulgar. I sat next to you and you said, should I marry him? I said, do you love him? She said, I think so. I said, no, well, I if you never... think so, marry him. I knew I didn't love him. I knew always... I well, just... then why did you go all the way to Mexico and go way I... out to sea on a boat to marry him? I, I told my girlfriend, uh, Mrs. Sheila Barbera, Joe Barbera, go over to Pamela Mason and see her face when you tell her the judge is now the Duchess of Alba. I wanted to see her face. And that was worth it. Because Pamela doesn't like me to be the Duchess of Alba. Oh, so, so you did it just to get Pamela. I like to get Ava to and mother to some of my best friends. <laughs> well, Ava g gave you the wedding ceremony, didn't she? Yeah, but the... I cooked the dinner night before on the yacht. Ah, uh -huh. that's not bad. That wasn't bad because I'm a damn good cook. I think this damn guy wanted a free cook. I should pay <laughs> for the <food> dinner. <laughs> So it's all over. Was it an ugly ending? It never started. We never made love at all. It wasn't an ugly ending. The ambulance came to pick me up at 12 o'clock in the night because I got some poisoning, so some cream I put on myself. And he took a taxi, borrowed $5 from my maid and took a taxi to the airport. After I gave him $2,000 to tip, but he didn't tip no one. Mm. I bought him a $6,000 beautiful cufflinks. And when I saw how he is, I said, give me back the cufflink, I give you cash. I think you need cash. So I gave him $2,000 to tip the people around me because we tip. In Hungary, we are maybe peasants, but we do tip the servants. But he didn't tip. He borrowed five dollars from the maid and took a taxi while the ambulance was taking me to the Cedars of Lebanon. Do you realize that every marriage has had and this? And Michael O'Hara was there. That's my other husband. And he put him in well, Wait a minute, wait a minute. How many, how many do you have? Well, I'm not divorced from Michael O'Hara yet. Only well, then how did you marry the other guy? Because in Mexico, anything goes. If you give 100 ah. percent Mazzetta, you can get the president of Mexico. Uh, He's Mexican lawyer. Mm. He's not really the Alba. So that, that was not a marriage? It wasn't consummated, or how do you call it? Consummated? I don't know. Consumé, I thought was a soup. <laughs> it was a soup? It was a big soup you were in, huh? And yeah, no, I didn't take it seriously, darling. I wanted to, actually, if you want to all know the truth, I wanted to make somebody very jealous who I made very jealous, and that made me very happy because now he I'd... loves me even more and I love him more. What? Oh, 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 really? Mm -hmm. Uh. Mm -hmm. You know who, but if, oh, 
Anyhow, go All on. Right. Anyway, now, uh, who was the great love of your life, Joshua? George Sanders. Always will be, because George Sanders, I... Now, I thought it was Rubarosa. I was his big love, and I was George Because when I went into your house, there's a big picture of Perfurio Rubarosa. Yeah. But uh, you, you never married him. Every husband I married since Porfirio Rubarosa, for the younger set, he was the most fabulous, wonderful ambassador of Santo Domingo to Paris. Dominican Republic. Who married, but he was the ambassador to Paris from Saint Dominican Republic. Right. Who married Barbara Hutton, Doris Duke. Each woman gave him five, ten million dollars because they wanted him so much. And this right, if I had money, I would marry him for ten million dollars. When, when you see this guy, I mean, see Porfirio Rubarosa. Oh, what a guy. This is some Porfirio Rubarosa. Wow. But that was Did you her. have to do anything for that? I didn't have to. I'd done it without have to. <laughs> but, but you never married him. No, because... But it, you told me that you never... You said my problem in life is that I will not sleep with a man. I marry them, then sleep with yeah, them, and that's where you... Yeah, but that was Ruby Rose, and I had to go to the opening of my first movie called Moulin Rouge. I remember. They said, Madame Saunders... If you need me, I have a suite next door to you. And this is the gospel truth. I couldn't zip up my dress, so I knocked the door. I said, Mr. Rubirosa, would you zip up my dress? And that was the beginning of the end. He zipped up my dress. He zipped it up? Yep. First ah. up and then down, and after the opening. <laughs> what a life, Joshua. And any woman ever slept with Rubirosa had to sleep with him again because he was so fantastic. He loved women. And I like a man who really loves a woman. But I mean, you've married a few men that love women, but what goes wrong? All my, nothing goes wrong after two years. What do you want them to be? After two three years, they bore the hell out of me. After how many? <laughs> two three years. I mean, this guy lasted two hours. Our sexual attraction only lasts two years with Ruby Rosetta. When I got together with Ruby George Harris as my dear, I lied to you. He was my husband because a sexual attraction will only last two years. After four years, he got a little bit uncomfortable, Georgie Porch. He said, this lasts a little too long. And I would have had married... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You were married to George Sanders, who was telling you all this while you were going with Ruby Rosa. Well, because George Sanders wanted to be Ruby Rosa, and Ruby Rosa wanted to be George Sanders. George wanted to be a playboy gigolo, and Ruby wanted to be an actor. And he could have had been, and George could have never been a gigolo because he was too high class and too gentleman. And a great actor. The most wonderful man for me as long as I live. Don't talk to me about him, I cry. Ah, ah, ah. I adored him. So those really are the only two men ever no. in your life. Conrad Hilton, I loved, adored. I thought he was my father because he looked like that. The Turk was a fantastic man, the ambassador. He became a, get a Nobel Prize for a book he wrote. The only man I ever married was this Spanish Mexican nitwit. <laughs> I didn't marry him, actually. I had my lawyer come to Palm Beach and he told me, darling, in Mexico, marriage doesn't mean a damn thing. You're not divorced yet. So we paid a couple of pesetas. Mm, mm, mm. Now what, Joshua? Now maybe what? marriage, have you figured out yet, maybe marriage is not for you? It is for me because I cannot be waken up in the morning and bring <laughs> my breakfast train and a man is in my bed and the butler says, who is that? That's my husband. How could I wake up otherwise? I can't have just a strange man in my bed. I think I have a headache. <laughs> so you have to be married. And I will be to the man I've made jealous. I think we are going to get married. Well, you've had enough practice, good Lord knows. None, none. All the men treated me like terrible, which I love. They are all chauvinistic pigs, which I love even more. I, I am the only woman maybe left in this century who looks for a chauvinistic pig, because that's what I like. <laughs> a chauvinist pig. George Sanders, I bought him a gold cigarette case by Tiffany's for about 5,000 or so, my first earning and lovely to look at. Then at the same set at MGM, I says, give me a cigarette, my darling. He says, I can't afford it, Cookie Lie. And out of my cigarette case, he couldn't afford it. And I loved him for it. Mm -hmm. Do you like a man who's tough with you? Oh, yes. As more they beat me up, as better I like it. I don't care what they beat. I like it. Do we have any takers? <laughs> Not really beat up, just sort of, you know, nicely. You like him to yell at you? No. George used to say, if you want something cookie line, he called me a little cookie, then sit up and bark. And the biggest part is in London, Paris, I had to say, wow, wow, then he let me have a cigarette. Well, that is weird. Not weird. I like it. A woman wants to be basically a woman. And she I'm... wants to sit up and bark. Not bark. <laughs> and be whipped. Not whipped. You always discard Why don't you get a, an apartment in a kennel somewhere? <laughs> You always miss screws, screws, screws me. I haven't laid a hand on you. <laughs> what did she say? He miss screws me. Construe. Construe. <laughs> miss construe. <laughs> we'll be right back after this message. <laughs> to 
younger women who are very happily married. Stay happy and try to make a good living. Be nice to him. Don't try to be the man. Be the woman, for God's sakes. Be, the good Lord put us on this earth to be women and men. The man has to be the aggressor, the man who protects you, and there has to be the man. Don't try to be a man. Do you think the feminist movement has done harm to the country? You know, I have a nightclub joke in my nightclub act saying, any woman who wears the pants in her family, the husband's secretary will wear the mink, and that's true. Because a woman, a, a man wants to have a woman. I cut, all the men want to marry me because I cook well, I cuddle well, and I'm rich. <laughs> do, a lot of men, do a lot of men want to marry you? Every man I ever met in my life, from the Duke of Marlborough on to Cornelius Vanderbilt Whitney, to Mr. Paley, to Mr. Henry Kissinger, to Mr. Kennedy, the president, everyone wanted to marry me so far. And I well, why'd you turn all those guys down and marry I, the other one? I was because I always choose the wrong ones. No, George Sanders, I love. And Mr. Kennedy was courtshiping me. I was mad in love with George. George stayed in my house in New York. And Jack used to bring me to the door, and I couldn't let him in the house. Anyhow, Jack only had one thing in his mind, you know what. And George, <laughs> George that he really had. Yeah. And Did I, you ever go for help? Did you ever go talk to a psychiatrist and say, what is my problem? I don't have to talk. I went one to a psychiatrist and he asked me so many questions. I said, Doctor, I am paying the bill, so don't you ask me the questions. So I never went back. Oh, he needed a psychiatrist, huh? <laughs> he was a charming Englishman, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, have you thought about a very young man? No, I would hate that. I need a man. Now he's my age before I need a much older man because I was desperately insane in well, love. How old a man then do you father. need? Father. Right now, while you have my birth certificate, you can. I don't have. <laughs> I don't, ha I don't know anything about your birth certificate. I brought it down to you. Oh. I brought it down to you so you shouldn't question Where is it? Where is my birth certificate? God damn it. I hate to show it because I've promised myself I never will, but this time I says the hell with it. One doesn't well, it's get... in Hungarian. How the hell but am I supposed to read that? <laughs> the, the numbers are there, and even in English it's the same. Don't say it loud because I shiver. I can't even... I can't read it. Well, he needs glasses. Ah. <laughs> oh, the whole audience is reading it, though. Uh, or does it She's 28? Of course, not even, not even. Ah, ah. Anyhow. You don't have to show me I your must... birth to Age doesn't matter, Georgia. I'm You're a beautiful woman. I show it to the woman. whole country. Of course it doesn't matter. I show it to the whole country because I'm sick and tired to defend my age. Other women make themselves young. I have to stand for my own age. I did start very young. At 15, I married a Turkish ambassador. At 17, Conrad Hilton. At 21, George Sanders, and so on. You had three husbands by the time you were 21? Yeah. But I stayed with George all my life, though, because as day until he died, he wasn't the only husband I ever really had. Yeah. I wavered a little bit left and right, but he was the only man I really respected and loved. That's the spirit. And we'll come back, and Barry Bostwick will join us here. Very few performers can boast the extensive experience my next guest has garnered on the stage and uh, on television, in films. He originated the role of Danny Zucco in uh, Greece on Broadway. He starred in the Rocky Horror Show, uh, which incidentally has become the longest running film in Hollywood's history. In his upcoming action-packed film, Megaforce, he plays a swashbuckling hero. Here is Barry Bostwick. Barry? <laughs> Me? Oh my God! Oh. You can't talk about it's me. It's contagious. I have a little uh, gift here. You are the first recipient of our celebrity Megaforce jacket. Wow! And I got you a, uh, I got you a small, because I understand you're working your way down to 178. I am. I am. I may I have, have to borrow your shirt and those pants. If it doesn't fit you, I put it on. Huh? Look at that! that, is that. Great. <laughs> <laughs> How's my Megaforce doing? Is it showing? Uh, I will try it. Let me try it on, please. Do you want to try it on? Yeah. Try the jacket on? Yeah, of course. The jacket on the whole damn With the thing. diamonds and everything? <laughs> Jeez. This. Oh, look at that. Yes. I love this. 
We do allow women in Megaforce. Yeah, what is wow. Megaforce? I don't know what Megaforce is. Multi-element group assault force. It's a uh, movie that'll be out June 25th in 1,400 theaters around the country. Close, close. Interesting, she looks like a truck driver. <laughs> Close it up. Okay. I love it. It's terrible. Remember, remember the last? You are very handsome, you know. Well, thank you. <laughs> remember what happened to the last guy that zipped you up? <laughs> I'm so nervous. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting down. I don't know. I'm afraid we'll be. <laughs> it's very hard to get this around the top of you. Here. <laughs> There we go. Oh, oh she, very Look at that, Sasha. Huh? I love it. Do you? Okay. I want one, too. Okay, we'll get you one, too. <laughs> See, that does look nice. What is Make the Force again? They can only follow me until here. Now, yeah. please tell them, otherwise I look really horrible. No, no. Does it make me My very bosom? My word. It's beautiful. Very bosom, I am afraid. Well, that's what it's all about, isn't it? <laughs> Megaforce, multi-element group assault force, and um, we are a group of rapid deployment uh, military men who oh. go around the, uh, the world and... Um, Knock off leaders? No, <laughs> no, oh. we try to save leaders from being knocked off. Ah. And we are a, uh, we utilize the highest in technology of uh, military equipment and uh, reconnaissance equipment. And it's a contemporary story. It's not set in the future. It's See, not I love sci-fi. those movies. Those are my yeah. to, Is it yeah. American? Yeah, it's well, it's a multi-international uh, group of men, sixty oh, men. I love it. And, uh, Who are the men in it? Um, the other men. You want to name Beck. all sixty? No, Michael I'm not Beck, six. one of the stars of the movie Warriors a few years ago, oh. and Xanadu, and Persis Kambada, no, quite wonderful. a beauty. Oh, yeah, I know him very well. Yeah, yes, yes. No, I know she's a friend yeah, of us, yeah. Indian. Yeah, friend of my daughter's ex. Oh, really? She's a beautiful girl. She's just a baby now. I don't know. Let's show, as long as we've been talking about it, let's show the clip right now, and oh, then yes. we'll come back and yes. I'll get you and Jaja together. I want one of this, please. I pay for it. No, beautiful. you don't have to pay for it. No, no, no. Not what you told, what you said about me. You never have to pay You're for anything. You're very handsome. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've arranged another marriage. <laughs> What you're going to see from uh, Mega Force <laughs> is a montage of scenes, so I guess it doesn't need a setup. No. But here's uh, Barry Bostwick at work in motion pictures. Watch him. I'll punch you in 286. He was born in Costa Brava, August 14th, 1945. His father was Augustus Guerrero. He was a plantation owner, 300,000 hectares. His mother's name was Maria Alvarez Sanchez. She was the daughter of a wealthy mining family. I see you've memorized everything about him. No, I didn't have to do that. I know him. say goodbye and remind you that the good guys always win. Hey. And they do too, I hope. You know, as I watched that, I recognized a scene from that. Do you realize that was on the news the other night? Was it really? Because the army in Washington sent out some experts to look at some of the vehicles you used yeah. in this yeah. because they were so unusual, the army may and they had an interview with your director, Hal Needham. That's right, yeah. Did he mention that the uh, Army's actually making 20 uh, of one of these vehicles to test it out? To test it out is yeah, so unusual. Also, apparently they can make 20 with one of our little mega destroyers, or one of those little cars that has rockets and, and Gatling guns mm. and everything, for the same price it would uh, cost to make one tank. And uh, they're much more maneuverable and all of that. Uh, I just, Clint Eastwood just lost me. I was in love with him all my life. He lost me to you. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh. See how fast she changes? <laughs> I wonder if Clint is thrilled. <laughs> well, we'll be back after this message. <laughs> Shaw 
Roger Gabor and Barry Boswick. You're uh, eligible to be married. Yes. But I'm huh? not. I have two husbands <laughs> right now. Uh, but are you looking? Am I looking? Or is it all career right you now? You should never look. No? It should just happen, shouldn't it? Only. It should just fall into your lap. Exactly. Uh. Yeah. But you're welcome. But you've got to move your lap around as places, you know, where there are... It doesn't look like yeah. someone who doesn't. No, no. 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 I have a very, very wonderful woman that I'm with. I've been with her a couple of years. A girl named Lisa Hartman. Will you marry her? Oh, I love oh. Lisa Hartman. You mean, I know Lisa the singer. Yeah, sure. Oh, I know. Oh, beautiful. what a nice yeah. combination. I didn't yeah. know that, yeah. Barry. You're I wasn't very crying, but I... You're living together only two years? Uh, uh, we just actually started living together about a month ago. Oh, wonderful. After two uh, years. We take it slow. We're well, that's clever. An old-fashioned couple. What advice would you give him, Jaja? Well, I think it is an absolutely right thing, but you see, some people I hear now who live together after being in love four years, they start to live together and then they break up. I, I don't know yeah. why. Uh, we've just gotten closer. That's one. Mm. Yeah. Well, see, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Are you anything like... All of these swashbuckler characters you play? Hmm. I have a great appreciation, I think, for the physical body and for my own discipline to keep myself moving and, and active. And I think that a lot of the characters that I like to play are ones that are physical. And uh, so in that way, I, I, I like that. I look. We brought you, you brought us a montage today from the yes, film. Yes, they asked me to bring a, a, Megaforce. Few, a few stills. Of so we took your stills and put them together oh, in a little... That. Show, show the character development. Well, of course, oh, that's... Oh, that was, that was Greece in 1972 on Broadway. I, I saw it. Danny Zuko. That's yeah. the one that uh, Travolta eventually did in the movie. Which did you do it? Excuse me? When did you do it? In 72. Because I was on Broadway then with 40 carats. Oh, that's right. Yes, oh. of course. Yeah, yeah. 40 carats. <laughs> Were you uh, without your shirt on, too? No, no. Sometimes, no. sometimes. <laughs> What's the next one? Oh, that's Pirates. The, Pirates of Penzance. That was last summer here at the Almondson Theater in L.A. Right. Uh, the that Joseph was Pack fabulous. I saw it fabulous. Yeah. Then the next one is... Scruples. Oh, yeah. I played loved Spider Elliot in that. My, I had very bad dye job on my hair in that. It was this next... Clip, this next still, that was Moviola. Movie, I played John Gilbert in Moviola, which oh, was a miniseries yeah. on television. Yeah. yeah, so talent, my God, how different characters you can play. Oh, so many varieties, such a variety Look of... Look at him. Movie, movie. Movie, movie, that right. You're a comedian. That's yeah. Stanley, that's Stanley Donen. Yeah, that was my, my bid for Jimmy Stewart. Stanley Donen is a great director. And I had a... And there's the new Rocky Horror Show. Yeah. Rocky Horror Picture that Show. Which has become see. a cult movie and has just run for years. And yes. I did not see that, damn it, but I will. Ah. Yeah. I and like I like you like this so much better. Mega Force. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you look divine like this. Ah, uh, great. Really nice, Barry. That's Thanks. fascinating. <laughs> My next guest is a comedian, an actor, a writer who recently co-wrote Live on the Sunset Strip with Richard Pryor. He's currently headlining at the Comedy Corner in Dallas for two weeks. This is his first appearance on our show. So I know you'll all give a warm welcome to Paul Mooney. Paul? Is there anybody out there that's ever been in love? No, I mean really in love. I'm talking about crazy in love. I think you can only be naive enough to be in love once. I think you love from then on. You know what I mean? I mean, when you cry, when you break up, <laughs> I love you, I love your toes, I love your hat, I love your tongue, I love you, I love you. And you fall downstairs when you break up. <laughs> I want to die. Let's kill ourselves. <laughs> then you become experienced. Then it's, you love me, baby? Oh, yeah, I love you. Yeah, I love you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you want to kill yourself? Yeah, you jump. I'll be there in five minutes. <laughs> it's funny. You know, we all are paranoid now, uh, living at home. And when you leave home, we all do the same thing. We turn our lights on and we turn on the radio, right? The burglars know about this trick. You might as well leave coffee and donuts. <laughs> you got the lights on. They can see what they're taking. You got the music playing. They can dance while they're doing it. <laughs> You know, I get a kick out of reading the newspaper because you always read about, all over the world, somebody's always seeing a monster. You got the Loch Ness Monster, you got the Abominable Snowman, you got Bigfoot, you got Square Toe, you got Little Butt, you got all these creatures. <laughs> I want one black person to see one monster and get on the six o'clock news. I saw it. I saw the monster. I saw the cornbread monster. 
He had great big old black eyed pea eyes, <laughs> greens hanging out of his pocket, and butter bean shoes. I saw him. Thank you. See, black people never see UFOs. We never see UFOs, ever. <laughs> I guess UFOs don't land in black neighborhoods. <laughs> Or maybe a long time ago, one landed in Harlem and one of the black people cut one of them. Don't you bring your black butt back here no more. <laughs> or maybe because when white people see UFOs, they get real dramatic and Academy Award performance. Even E.F. Hutton listens. <laughs> we, we were in the desert. We were vacationing. We saw something hovering. We, we, we heard voices. When black people do this, you cross-examine them. We, we were in the desert. What were you black people doing in the desert? <laughs> we were vacationing. You don't have jobs. How could you be vacationing? <laughs> we saw something hovering. It's those wide hats, you black people. <laughs> we saw bright lights. What color were they? Red. We heard voices. Pull over. Highway Patrol, get them out of this office. <laughs> I am a horror freak. I go anywhere to see a horror movie, you know. Horror movies crack me up because they're always funny before you go and see them. The Omen, part one and two, frightened me. I went home and gave my kids away. I said, get out and take that ugly dog with you. Then a true story, the Amityville Horror. For God's sake, get out. A white family moved into a house with a lake. The house talked to them. They were sick as the house. They talked back. <laughs> they stayed till they couldn't take it. What do you want from us? The house said, get out! They said, rent this house to a black family. <laughs> Houses don't talk back to black families. <laughs> get out. <laughs> we can't live here. Then we'll burn it to the ground. Ain't nobody gonna live here. <laughs> and since you doing all this talking, wake me up at six o'clock. I gotta go to work. <laughs> and you better not use my telephone. When I'm on stage, people say, hey, there's Paul Mooney, the comedian. But when I travel, I carry the American Express application. <laughs> They won't give me my card. They know exactly who I am. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, after you MC a talk show like this, you get very observant over the years. This is a brand new suit, isn't it? Yes. Huh? Yes, I know. I know. I know it. I know. <laughs> That has driven me crazy sitting over there through the whole show, Paul. <laughs> yes, it is. It huh? Is, yes, my manager. Would well, you have to take it back and then tell him it didn't fit? No. Huh? Would you believe him if I told you it was stolen? No. <laughs> he is wonderful, isn't he? Paul Mooney. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Very much. Nice. I know him. While we're at it, we have to say goodbye to Zsa Zsa because she's got an appointment. You don't want to show my beautiful telegram from President Nixon to me on my birthday. Oh, uh, did you I... celebrate a birthday? Of course I do. I've last Happy time... birthday. Thank you, madam. I'll show that. I have the same birthday as President Ronald Reagan, the same February the 6th. But look what Mr. Nixon wrote to me. I can't read. That's too now far with me. What does he say? You're swearing too much these days. What does that say? Read it, somebody. Huh? You, uh, greetings. Report no, no, to no, Fort no. or what? <laughs> Uh, dear Jaja, let me make this no, perfectly no, clear. No, no, no. Now what? What is this? I can't read it. You are as beautiful and no, ageless no. as... No, no, no. No, she knows. He it. says, dear Jaja, that anyone as beautiful as you should have a birthday is disgusting. Nevertheless, me and Pat send your best wishes. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's and our best wishes, and too. And you say that he doesn't have sense of humor, you stinker. <laughs> I didn't think that was a funny telegram. I thought it was very serious. I it was awfully serious. It was serious because I was a year older, damn it. But otherwise, it was a very sweet telegram. Jaja, <laughs> thank you. Jaja Gabor.
We'll come. Shasha, let me introduce you to a green Hungarian. Adam Danica, I love meeting a new man. No, Shasha, why, Bell, green Hungarian is a wine. I adore good wine, and I adore good man. Not necessarily in that order. It's an exceptional wine. But, darling, it's not even green. You noticed. It's a delicious white wine. I love it. Why, Bell, green Hungarian. It's perfect for dinner, parties, or whatever. It's the whatever that intrigues me, darling.